Jai Hind, Jai Bharat, and welcome to Dev Talks. This is Adi Achin. After about a week or so, I have with me back again, Left and General Dushan Singh, who's going to touch a very touchy topic, if I may, uh, to our friends in Pakistan, which is the crown jewels, or one might say that their mode of survival, or one might say their suraksha kavach, or one might say whatever else, uh, atomy asase, uh, as what they call it, their nuclear weapons. Two questions. What are they? Can we get Pakistan to get rid of them? And is there a plan that the US has somewhere down the line in their books to get rid of these things? And of course, finally, what do we see happening in the world which is telling us something about them? So, good evening and welcome to the show. Thank you, Adi. And uh, good to be back again. Sir, Paleto, I mean, let's, let's just talk about these nuclear weapons first. Uh, you know, a uh, lot of people doubt even the explosions, but I don't. I know they have happened. They've got these weapons. Uh, what are they like? Are they, are they? I mean, uh, I'm sure nuclear weapons, have anything and everything is to be feared. But what is their efficacy? What is their capability? And what is their kind of setup, sir? You see, uh, uh, Pakistan does have nuclear weapons. There is no doubt on that. Uh, where people have a slight bit of doubt, you know, some of the scientists, American scientists have come up with some theories where they say that the yield of weapons uh, which were uh, tested, and uh, mind you, these tests were done only once by Pakistan. So they have not been reconfirmed whether their yields are what they have claimed to be. So therefore, uh, the quantum of damage it could be more, it could be less, one doesn't know, one, one is not very sure. But definitely strategic nuclear weapons, uh, they do have. AQ Khan did a great spy uh, come scientific, scientific, scientific work to develop this, you know, uh, this weapon system of crown jewels, as many people call them, of Pakistan. Uh, plus, he also proliferated it to North Korea, which is, which is a very sad, sad commentary. Uh, somewhere down the line, I don't think they could have done it without the tacit of China. That also we should uh, keep in mind. Because, and the uh, US, sir? Sorry uh, to interrupt you, but... Not, not really the US. Uh, in fact, uh, US was actually, it was uh, more it was more Netherlands from where he got all these technology. I don't think the US was really very uh, uh, much aware of this, this, this particular plan. Because later on, when I went to the US a few years back, I found them that they were going after the uh, AQ Khan with a real zeal, you know, and they wanted to get him uh, punished and uh, kept under uh, check, etc. Didn't so, US uh, offer Pakistan five, six billion dollars to stop, not to do this any further, sort of a thing? Yeah, I, I mean, they actually uh, they were worried more about the proliferation than than anything else, you know, Pakistan, see, by the time, Look the other way. Uh, by the time Pakistan, uh, people realized Pakistan was already having this weapon system, but see, AQ Khan, we'll not discuss that. I think that will take us a little more yes, time. Sir. Yes, sir. And, and we will divert from our uh, main topic. What is important for us to understand is that efficacy wise, there is a doubt that whether they are of the same efficacy as clear. Uh, but we should take it as far as our security is concerned that they are an effective uh, uh, nuclear uh, weapon systems. Absolutely. The second thing is second thing is definitely the tactical nuclear weapons, uh, which are of the five to twelve kt category. They are uh, definitely thanks to China that the uh, Pakistanis have got it. Uh, India somehow is not reported to have uh, this category of weapons because India uh, in any case has gone in for uh, no first use of uh, nuclear weapons. So if Pakistan uses nuclear weapon, whether it is tactical or strategic in nature, as far as we are concerned, it is a second strike and the second strike can't be half-hearted. Second strike would be with our complete might and uh, even Pakistan would be aware of such a response. So therefore, uh, how the nuclear uh, uh, scenario, nu nuclear conflict play out is a very, very, uh, uh, very, very uncertain, uh, I would say, uh, 
uncertain uh, picture which is there in front of them. people have a number of scenarios which they have built i will also cover one of them but uh, to say that exactly it will happen like that is something which uh, we are not very sure you know will it be escalatory in nature so it has to be one one time use you know, given the international pressure etc so um, so that's as far as their uh, efficacy is concerned uh coming down to how the nuclear weapon is playing out for pakistan is concerned i think i'll go go through a small presentation which will put the entire thing into perspective and then we can take on from their question answers also and uh, some additional discussion points as they come across during the presentation right so uh, let me so let me start with that okay uh, so here it is i think yeah past pakistani nukes possibilities in the future us pressure to restore democracy this is exactly uh, what uh, we had decided to discuss but you must read the line below it and the cartoon which is there in front na mullah na military na nuclear na china na us na arabia bachayega koi to keval rupaiya what i am trying to say is that to me as per my assessment nuclear weapons are threat in being to use them in the physical way is going to be a decision which is not so easy to take after the japanese uh, strike which i mean us strike on japan we have come very close to nuclear nuclear uh, uh, face offs with us and uh, ussr and now during ukraine crisis also a number of occasions russians have uh, displayed some kind of uh, uh, inclination towards the use of uh, nuclear weapons however not so much so in they were all kind of a show of intent right. rather, rather than really going for the strike so is the nuclear nuclear angle has to be managed more than uh, dealt with uh, dealt with in terms of finishing them off or dealt with in terms of uh, uh, dealing with a con- nuclear conflict and that can only happen if pakistan survives so our ultimate our ultimate uh, worry should be is pakistan going to survive because if it does not survive then the nuclear weapons have a major chance of getting proliferated it need not be only the terrorists it could be other states which are you know eyeing especially the muslim world for a capability uh, such as this by uh, influencing people who are responsible for nuclear weapons uh, in the in, in pakistan if ak khan could be influenced to proliferate it to north korea what stops saudi arabia or uae or for that matter any other iran for that matter any other country of the muslim world uh, trying to achieve the same so that's where we have to be a little careful so uh, why i said sabse bada rupaya is that you know like we were just discussing that uh, you know what is happening in china was told in 1922 by an author uh, about two decades back there was an author called mikal ahmed he was a economist a very famous economist of uh, pakistan who had uh, written a book on economics of pakistan and the and the title which he gave to the pakistani state or his own state actually was an economic crisis state pakistan is an economic crisis state 20 years back okay 20 years back when all this shit was not happening to pakistan and what did he say economic management in pakistan has steadily deteriorated to the point where the economy has lurched from one financial crisis to the next at the heart of the problem has been poor management of public finance and deep seated unresolved structural issues in the econo- in the economy that bad management and poor governance has exacerbated the consequences are plain to see 
macro economic instability high inflation poor public services criminal neglect of social sector widespread corruption crippling power outages growing unemployment deepening poverty and a deteriorating debt profile wasn't he the nasdamas of pakistan <laughs> exactly whatever he had written each and every word you can see now happening in pakistan two decades ago two, uh, decades two decades ago and this uh, particular excerpt has been taken out by uh, uh, the lady who edited the book uh, maliha lodi uh, mm -hmm. she was the, she uh, yeah she was the uh, former pak ambassador oblig high commissioner to us un and the uk uh, in an article in dawn very recently reminded the public of pakistan look you had such brains in that country who forewarned you but you didn't want to listen to them this has been the basic cause of pakistan's problem today and linked to this is nuclear arsenals as well wrong priorities was nuclear really a priority for pakistan but they believed in bhutto who said roti kha lenge but nuclear weapon bana ke rahenge they said that the nuclear weapons was to in response to indian weapons i like agree indian weapons were never targeted at pakistan it was targeted more at absolutely absolutely see the question is question is if you prioritize things wrongly you <laughs> land up with, you land up with these kind of problems a you went in for nuclear nuclear uh, arsenals which cost you know yeah. and you have to you have to uh, dynamically keep on uh, uh, keep them ready for keep keep on uh, keep them ready for usage uh, they still don't have the triad in place although the chinese have loaned uh, submarines to them but you know their own indigenous triad is not there in place they are still trying to catch up with the uh, indians as far as delivery mechanisms are concerned there there have 16s uh, are not yet upgraded although america has uh, promised them that they are going to be upgraded so so there are problems with the pakistanis and they have to spend money on that so uh, if you uh, look at this big question which we were today discussing how is pakistan surviving the first bullet is the only nuclear weapon state of the islamic world okay so somewhere the entire islamic world looks at pakistan with a sense of a uh, kind of an obligation to keep this country afloat okay because nobody else has this capability so they must keep pakistan afloat so that tomorrow if something is to be done if it becomes something like a face off uh i am not talking really of crusades some people do talk of crusades also so this this kind of a capability would come come in handy deep rooted anti india orientation which was the result uh, because of this the nuclear weapons were uh, you know uh, the pakistan is bent for uh, development of nuclear weapons basically because of the anti india orientation and somewhere there is a design Or, or there is a desire to regain the glory of the Mughal rule. Okay, they they feel deprived. You know, the people of that region feel deprived that they were once the ruler of the entire Indian subcontinent, and from there they have been restricted to the small land uh, around Indus, what is called Pakistan today. Even their other half has been uh, torn apart from them. so somewhere there is this uh, like the chinese have a century of humiliation i think pakistanis are also now touching a century of humiliation having lost all <laughs> four wars having lost all four wars so with the, all this you know to found it i must say yeah so with all these things inside them boiling inside them i think this is something which is making them survive at all core i mean against all odds it's a battleground state Now this was discussed uh, with uh, uh, Brigadier Sagal a few days back. So I was listening to that, and I kind of uh, appreciated this word "battleground state." Why? The foundation of this battleground state was laid in the 40s, early 40s. 
you see when they realized with the number of mutinies which were taking place churchill realized that india is not going to be now uh, uh, under the british raj anymore uh, and the, the the writing was there on the wall that they had to give independence to india it was at that time that they stroked this two nation theory and started propping up jinnah and the others uh, who were pro muslim league iqbal etc so what started happening was that uh, you know they started making a move to create a buffer state out of the indian subcontinent which could contain then ussr because ussr had emerged quite strong after the second world war you see they had they were the one who actually beat back the germans uh, after the uh, winter offensive which the germans had launched so therefore and they were moving towards afghanistan the 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 the, the first uh, what do you call that great game was already played between uh, uk and uh, ussr with ussr kind of uh, uh, emerging as the uh, stronger power as far as uk was concerned so therefore they wanted to contain ussr they want they also wanted this region as some kind of a uh, some kind of a buffer state to have a leverage over india as well and china and later on henry kissinger used this pakistan state so called uh, i would say step over state you know he mm. hop step jumped into china ping pong diplomacy as they call it it was done through pakistan it was a great foresight from the western uh, point of view especially for uk Uh, and you can knew that the power is now getting transferred to the us after the second world war uk was a declining power and so therefore they were taking on this uh, secondary role but they were making the base for the us to use this particular state so it became a battleground state in inception itself that if if they have to control this region they must have this particular state which and that was the reason why when they did the distribution of the armed forces do you know the percent, population percentage was 19% people had gone towards pakistan and about 81 were in indian subcontinent but the distribution of defense equipment and the uh, forces was 3367 so they almost gave them double the requirement and why did they give why did they give them double the requirement somewhere i think the seeds they felt that if the military of pakistan is strong they would be able to easily control this country and that is one of the reason why liaquat ali khan after liaquat ali khan was uh, in, uh, he died uh, the entire uh, history of pakistan has seen only uh, military rule either is that either why that... the west is that why the west has always accepted dictators in pakistan military dictators if absolutely Wow. It, it's easy. It's easier to control a uh, a dictator than a democrat democratically elected. Uh, yeah, George Bush's elected. comment saying Musharraf is a stand-up guy. So, so you know uh, what I'm saying is, it's easy to make a. I mean, you you select a chap, prop him up, and thereafter do what you want to do based on uh, your uh, requirements. You just tell him he this guy will uh, follow suit. Yeah. Okay. and it's easier to eliminate them also with the cia having a permanent presence there you must, you would have realized they had about 11 to 12 bases in pakistan till 2011 as latest till 2011 and even now i think they are pressing for some so therefore it is it became a battleground state at the time of partition and remains so till today hmm. why how is it being used today in current scenario us china russia india iran afghanistan all are battling in the space through their own means and by battling i don't mean only using hard power they are battling through non military means they are battling through diplomacy they are battling through economic uh, leverages after all when india sends uh, free med- i mean uh, medicine aids to afghanistan to to under uh, undermine pakistan's uh, Uh, effort in afghanistan it's a battle it's a battle of influence true so therefore it has become a battleground state now when a state becomes a battleground state 
especially with powers which are almost of a similar i won't say they're exactly similar but yes uh, china is fairly strong now us is also us of course is the uh, uh, till now uh, is the number one uh, military power india iran all these countries are almost uh, you know having a very strong uh, presence globally as well so when they are having a kind of a battleground scenario in a particular country that country gets leverages to extract its pound of flesh whether it is from the chinese or whether it is from the us so if pakistan is use this this particular threat as an opportunity they would be able to survive and I, and i think they are exactly doing that you must have uh, heard a few days uh, back munir went to china basically seeking permission that should, should we do a military coup yeah so what is that that's a battleground thing which is forming up in pakistan the chinese are very very uh, clever guys they will not set their foot there but definitely they would prop up a government of their uh, 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 their choice which they have done in nepal they are trying to do so in bhutan they are they are trying to influence myanmar everywhere around us they are trying this kind of a strategy so it's a battleground state advantage pakistan next isi and pak army although in the recent uh, few months pak army seems to have lost credibility in handling a very very volatile internal situation which is persisting in pakistan but yet they are the strongest amongst the all the elements of the uh, power yes. yeah. whether it is civilian whether it is judiciary whether it is uh, executive so so amongst all the uh, uh, or mullahs or you know the well, terror right. terror brigade they are the strongest and they have the uh, wherewithals okay so so what we see is that this battleground formulation of pakistan has somehow in my mind turned out to be a boon to them where they are taking advantage both from the us as well as uh, from the chinese and the others as well uh, all whether friendship with china goes without saying has been uh, used by pakistan very effectively china because of its almost sinking virtually everything into the cpec has no option but to keep china uh, keep pakistan afloat although it's not very happy with cpec it's not happy with pakistan but what choice does it have today it has sunk so much money in pakistan that it has to extract its uh, pound of flesh but so if, will... if pakistan fails etim this im that im everything Every, everything fails so therefore they have a lot going as far as pakistan success is concerned i think broad there may be many other factors but these are the broad factors because of which pakistan is still surviving so what is the nuclear scenario since this was the first bullet and and then we come to this nuclear thing which is supposed to be one of the factors through which they are surviving the impact of a nuclear conflict between india and pakistan would be not only regional but global and how do i say that okay uh let's see the uh, the holding global holding it's around 13900 nukes held between russia us uk france india israel and china i'm not counting north korea because uh, mm-hmm. some people say that north koreans uh, things have still not been proved uh, as far as the uh, efficacy delivery and other things are they continue to keep doing the tests we are not very sure whether uh, they have actually achieved uh, the capability but in any case if it is there it is going to be very minimal in numbers mm, okay 10 20 so, weapons are yeah so barring russia and the us which have around 93% of the 13900 odd arsenals nuclear arsenals the rest all are you know holding very little 7% amongst the five countries which are left and everybody is around the 200 mark 200 give or take plus minus 30 40 50 okay so barring the two big cats 
others are small uh, uh, kittens which are uh, brandishing these uh, crown jewels but given the impact of these uh, weapon systems even uh, even if four five of them go off together it's going to be a major major crisis as far as the globe is concerned and that i'll just uh, cover it up here as far as in new uh, pakistan is concerned what we are discussing today they have around 140 to 150 india is slightly uh, slightly lesser they say as of now maybe around 140 but we are not very sure these are figures which i have taken from uh, uh, from a study by american scientists uh, who have done the study on uh, nuclear arsenals 165 uh, cypriots right so sometime ago i remember yeah. the figures vary from 140 to 170 165 we're not very sure these are all guesswork i suppose but what people have definitely confirmed through satellite view satellite imagery is possibly there are 10 locations which are housing the nuclear capable missiles or fighter bombers so definitely these 10 uh, missiles uh, 10 locations in pakistan are prime targets for any strike okay then there are about nine locations where the nuclear weapons are held in a disassembled state okay and this and this disassembling has been done under a very high security arrangements in these areas to prevent them from getting proliferated to terrorists with this uh, as we are aware you had uh, sent me the tweet where this uh, gentleman the father of uh, dg IS, ispr today i think major uh, general uh, ahmed yeah major, ma- major general uh, ahmed and his father is basir who actually transferred some nuclear information to osama bin laden so a serving general's father who got later on designated as a terrorist by the united nations is involved in this kind of a proliferation what stops in future from these things going into the hands of undesirable elements or terrorists or whatever you want to call them or even being transported or proliferated to countries which should not have them because if these these weapons go to say middle east then israel is going to be di- why do you think israel keeps uh, striking at iran mm. they don't want a nuclear uh, see israel at will takes action against its neighbors why can't india do that because we are surrounded by two nuclear states now if something like this happens from pakistan towards the middle east or the west asia israel would be challenged so so this is something which we need to worry about especially in the light of the tweet uh, which you showed me i think it's giving me one more confirmation that uh, things are not as uh, as secure as people talk about there could be some there could be some uh, you know scope of these getting proliferated not only yes, to ter- yeah uh, guys i don't know if uh, because i don't see the reaction to it uh, i don't know if you guys caught on to what sir said the current dg ispr's father was involved in leaking nuclear secrets and is a designated uh terrorist terrorist so and i have substantial proof for that as well so just keep that in mind sir sorry and his organization through which he was helping osama bin laden has also been designated by the un so both so both are i mean banned actually but this man still survives in the uh, pakistan army and munir has done this change very recently late 2022 after taking over after uh, after he took over the uh, reins of uh, pakistan i was reading that you know and he has selected a man of this connectivity for a media related job and that too he is not a regular general cadre officer he is a eme officer eme officer Elect- electrical mechanical engineer officer only second time in the history of pakistan to have been uh, to for an officer of the non general cadre being employed for this job 
in 1991 they had appointed a engineers engineers i would still say are you know uh, basically you know uh, fighting uh, s- s- uh, fighting unit or support unit but eme is definitely out and out a logistics unit so a general from that has been placed in dgisprs uh, uh, spot means he has some very high connectivity in the hierarchy of pakistan and that is something we should worry us especially with his father's connectivity to uh, to uh, to taliban to afghan taliban and how do you know afghan taliban if it is connected to afghan taliban today ttp is uh, cuddling around with afghan taliban so if ttp gets hold of this kind of a connect- connection then things will be totally different it will be it will be a very dangerous situation in pakistan especially we are worried not about the strategic ones we are worried about the tactical ones yeah wo jo kya sheikh rashidar said na pau pau ke bam yeah, yeah the, the smaller ones those are the ones which are of worry to us if now there was a, some some people said that uh, with the current holdings they can hit about one third of indian cities in one go out of the 400 odd major cities which we have but by 2025 these figures are going to increase to about uh, 250 by uh, in, in uh, with pakistan then almost 3/4 of our cities can be hit in one go okay if india uses 100 strategic weapons and pak 150 fatalities could be between 50 to 125 million nuclear fire could release 16 to 36 kg of black carbon smoke spreading globally within weeks globally surface sunlight will decline by 20 to 35% temperature may fall by 2 to 5% or 2 to 5 degrees and precipitation will fall by 15 to 30 recovery will take 10 years decline in productivity threatening mass starvation and additional worldwide collateral fatalities have not been accounted for so it will be a it will be a major major crisis and that is one of the reasons why nuclear weapons become weapons of deterrence than a weapon of use and hence one of the primary reasons for pakistan to survive till now any other country by now would have been uh, with begging bowls all over the world it is still going around with begging bowls but it is getting that uh, you know when they are about to uh, start dying somebody releases a small tranche to them you know and they they start surviving again so something like that is happening to pakistan so what are the areas of opportunity for india i would take these six seven areas which i have listed pak economy you know how do we denuclearize them or how do we uh, dissuade pakistan from stop throwing this nuclear thing the photo which you see is a scenario in which a likely nuclear conflict confrontation can take place you know it may start with our uh, our forces making deep in roads which forces the pakistanis to use a tactical nuclear weapon which forces the uh, indians because for them then it's a nuclear strike to use strategic strike which would force pakistan to use a strategic strike which would result in actually an apocalypse kind of a situation at, as as far as south asia is concerned definitely other regions uh, other countries in the region will also get severely affected central asia and other places but bulk of europe and um, at least the eastern europe and uh, um, parts of africa and most of the west asian middle east countries would be under the influence of these strikes if they happen in, in the way uh, it has been projected you know 100 or 100 uh, 100 strategic nuclear weapons uh, are struck by each other you know of course india and pakistan will be obliterated uh, for a, and if not india but at least pakistan will be obliterated obliterated from the earth you know so that is the level of uh, you know the danger which we are facing so pak economy is an opportunity for us how do we exploit this pak 
dwindling pak economy to ensure that pakistan gets some sense in them and stop doing this saber rattling which they are doing always you know the pak army today is at its weakest after 1971 how do we make it more weaker that is the second opportunity which we have pak pak afghan rift is an opportunity for india how do we how do we use afghanistan to make pakistan boil around the durand line so that our eastern i mean their eastern and our western flank is secure and we get less sardardi from the kashmiri uh, militants my god then us china con- confrontation is an opportunity for us us china confrontation we have at this stage based on our national interest take a side to ensure that these nuclear weapons are taken care of of pakistan one thing which i am quite sure is that pa- us was involved in the nuclear weapons safety and security from quite some time as far as pakistan is concerned based on the presence of cia and the military bases of the us which were there in the past so their intelligence in pakistan is definitely very very strong i am sure these can be reactivated if we if we play the cards of us china conf- conf- confrontation well russia china cooperation is also an opportunity for us because if we want something to be done into pakistan and russia and china today are getting more and more closer because of their national interest coinciding you remember russia is now planning to uh, send oil from the uh, from their ports directly on to chennai and you know beyond so there is there is this uh, there is this cooperation of russia china which can be an opportunity for us to to further weaken pakistani uh, economy on their own i mean we don't do anything else we just make ourselves too big russia china cooperation being exploited by india in a manner that our economy continues to grow faster and faster and the china uh, pakistan is continue to struggle and rumble along the way they are this will lead to pakistan probably getting some sense and coming on to the negotiating table with some kind of arrangements for security of their nuclear arsenal or or denuclearization for all that for all you know after all ukraine was also denuclearized so maybe i mean these are these are uh, these are uh, doors which we need to exploit simultaneously manu we must maneuver for unsc now and uh, of late i think i am seeing even the chinese are not too averse to india being there in the uh, high table so uh, so let's let's use this russia china cooperation to maneuver ourselves into unsc it will be a big blow for pakistan let me tell you it will be a big blow for pakistan and it would probably force after all kamar bajwa did have some sense you know during his entire tenure you found that the situation the ceasefire was holding on mumun munir has come and we have had the punch attack so some sense has to prevail in the leadership's mind and for that we need to exploit these opportunities which i am referring to penetrate the middle east through itut include saudi arabia in this let's use all our resources the uae prince has enough uh, influence with saudi arabia Ar- arabian crown prince i think both should be should be i should say persuaded by india to join the itut and make it to, into itut sa i mean s if you want to go by the code uh, it would be a it would be a excellent arrangement of a quad uh not really quad type of arrangement a quad plus kind of an arrangement to ensure the security of west asia 
माइनस पाकिस्तान रिड्यूसिंग दी इंपॉर्टेंस ऑफ ओ आई सी विच पाकिस्तान हैज बिन ट्राइंग टू एक्सप्लॉय टू गेट बैक टू इंडिया अगेन फोर्सिंग पाकिस्तान टू डील विथ हज बायोलेटरली इन अ पॉजिटिव मैनर एंड नॉट डू अ लिप सर्विस दैट यू नो रिसेंटली मेड द स्टेटमेंट दैट फॉर हज कश्मीर रिमेन्स आर primary focus we will continue to support and blah 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 what all i mean the same speech which he gave uh, karna padta hai sir so that's there but on ground something like that positive happen may happen if we put put these pressures on them hmm. information operations and gray zone why are we shying away from it and to that extent i would uh, i appreciate jan uh, 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 Mr. Jay Shankar's uh, our foreign minister's approach. The Chinese are doing some kind of a wolf diplomacy. I think Jay Shankar is no less a more <laughs> sav, a more sav, uh, savvy looking uh, response gets you better dividends. He's not rude, sir. Jay Shankar is not rude. rude. The Chinese are that's rude. Why, that's why I'm saying he's more savvy, and when he re- when he responds, he responds formally, but. With politeness, which is uh, which is expected of a diplomat. Yeah, there is a there is a steely politeness in his voice. I would put it this way: there is a steely politeness, but the steel is there, mm-hmm. which can hurt you. Right. So these are the uh, areas which India can utilize to actually ensure that the nuclear angle of Pakistan uh, is. Reduced, minimized, or even if possible, denuclearized. That's a that's a very large aim. Uh, maybe it it will not come up so easily unless the entire Pakistan collapses and uh, some arrangements are made to ensure that these weapons are properly disposed of, etc. So that's a very very far fetched uh, hmm. uh, yeah. possibility. Uh, we have to work below that threshold. uh this i will not cover uh, it is basically to say that all this has occurred because of their economy having gone to dogs i say they were the grain surplus country and now the uh, grain belt has been turned into drain belt you know and why because of various reasons you know economic yeah. uh, trade deficit uh you know uh, by end of january they had 12000 containers waiting in their ports with grains food grains which cannot be paid because of lack of foreign exchange resulting in supply chain problems it was no more actually a supply chain problem it became more of a uh, a payments problem they are not, they don't have the money fiscal deficit is humongous the uh, it's around 37% increase 6.22 trillion rupees similarly their overall budget is going to be about 11.2 trillion usme se uh, uh, 6.22 trillion agar deficit hai to kya haal hoga unka they are actually printing money okay any any amount of aid has never helped pakistan from 1958 till today 13 times bailout packages have been uh, sorry the 23 times bailout packages have been given to them 13 times they have faced bop bop crisis they have not learned and they are not going to learn and that is the reason why imf is not giving them these tranches so easily they are forcing them to implement uh, measures so that uh, so that you know that country somehow survives government is you know uh, uh, look at the inflation 24% food inflation 35% thanks to 12000 containers waiting at the uh, ports the floods have further taken them to the cleaners so government is resorting to some sos measures of a charity which to my mind are just superficial <laughs> just superficial absolutely they really don't have Thirty uh, percent saving of energy. Uh, tell me, uh, people in the south, uh, in the South Asian continent, have the least amount of 
efficiency or uh, response sense of responsibility in saving uh, energy on their own unless you put a uh, put a danda like you know cut uh, uh, there will be uh, el electricity cut from this time to this time every day or four hours cut every day tab tak koi saving nahi hoti hai apne aap koi saving nahi karta india mein कहने के लिए लोग बोलते हैं ऑन कर दो ऑफ कर दो जब तक वो गवर्नमेंट काटती नहीं है ना आपका बिजली तब तक सेविंग नहीं होती है सो सच लाइक मेजर्स दे हैव यू नो दे आर सेलिंग पार्क एम्बेसी पोर्ट्स लैंड द यूएस और रह क्या गया अपनी जमीन बेच रहे हैं यार जमीन बेच करके अपनी इकोनॉमी ठीक कर रहे हैं फिर तो बेसिस भी खरीद लेगा अमेरिका यहाँ पे पाकिस्तान में भी सो so, a country if it is forced to sell its land i think that's the trigger of its downfall so uh, these are things which are very very uh, i would say superficial in nature as far as their economy revival is concerned they have not been able to do it in the past i don't think they'll be able to do it in the present and the future as well why is it in a mess it is basically same i won't go over it so what is the likely prognosis okay i'm coming to my final uh, you know crystal gazing as you say security of nuclear assets especially the smaller ones and dirty bombs this will remain the topmost concern as far as the world is concerned disintegration or anarchy or war with india what is going to happen is it going to disintegrate and here i'm talking about people you know when we had discussed normalization levenization etc etc is it going to transform into some kind of anarchy it won't disintegrate but there will be anarchy from the periphery and going towards the center more than what it is today sir yes today it is it's not on the streets yeah at least anarchy anarchy is when you are eating a bread and somebody murders you and take your, takes your bread from your mouth that would be i am talking of the anarchy word came from the french uh, revolution if you remember you know when uh, the richer uh, lord of france were uh, absolutely unaware of what was happening with the commoners so that kind of a situation or to divert everything else war with india these are the three big things which i feel could be uh, one of the solutions like i said they never learn from their mistakes 23 mm -hmm. times uh, aid packages 13 times bop crisis yet imf every time has given them the uh, loan yet the result has been zero sifar urdu mein bolte hain sifar shunya inko akal nahi aati hai okay likely control of pakistan by terror groups especially the peripheries balochistan apk all those going under the hammer of terror groups what will be the impact greater presence of the chinese in our backyard cpec it has to manage it water port it has to extract its uh, power from uh, the dams which they are already put sinking money uh, in the uttarakhand as in the uh, in the pok and the gilgit uh, uh, baltistan area so the chinese possibly would like to take maximum out of this particular belt and uh, make good their losses so there would be greater presence which is a cause of worry for us yeah especially especially in a collision of threat Afghanistan Taliban may seize control of western tracts in collaboration with CTP uh, actually a kind of a sub point of the uh, bullet mm. number 4 that said likely control uh, by pak terror groups likely precipitative action by the pak army in india to unite the rapidly deteriorating unity of pakistan that's what they try to do with punch ki bhai yeah. punch karo kuch jawab aayega thoda sa but i feel punch was just a trailer wo hai sir but i personally feel punch is more internally focused than focused on india it is basically ki yaar theek hai wahan par 
कुछ करो ताकि जवाब आए एटलीस्ट वी बेबल टू होल्ड आर पोजिशन टूगेदर and the response which india is giving is very good let them be on the tenter hooks let them also. see let them let them keep guessing what india is going to do right uh, so what can india do need for strong border and internal security management especially in hyper sensitive areas including the hinterland strong isr engage china by non military means through international alliance aggressive diplomacy don't let the twain settle in a collusive mode support the taiwan calls i'm being a little bold today i'm i'm doing no no more uh, diplomatic beating talking. around the bush <laughs> yeah beating around the bush see if china is engaged on two fronts pakistan is engaged on two fronts india will breathe lighter india will breathe better absolutely and we will get the space required for our economic development yeah right keep the afghan taliban and pak rift alive and i'm not talking of you know covert operations or anything like that no just through your soft power through your inter- international uh, international diplomacy through support where it is required and when it is required without getting your boots on to the ground that's what we should do uh, keep you know it's like uh, make the uh, make the uh, your enemies play around with each other and ultimately you will be the benefit benefactory of uh, that particular uh, that part, that particular fight uh, then strengthen internal security uh, internal social harmony to cater for likely precipitative action by pakistan and india this is very important i mean this i have been deliberating upon it i think there is a need for us to focus on this i somewhere we are losing track of our internal security internal cohesion internal cohesion. social internal social fabric of ours must not break because that is something which people are exploiting in matters of national security we need to display a very very high degree of uh, social harmony Unity i think yeah i think we uh, our our politicians our, our leaders have to keep national security above politicization politics it is something which we need to seriously take note of and all think tanks must actually keep talking about it because if something is going to get damaged it will be our national security if our social cohesion is not uh, there it has sir, that silly statement by i don't know uh, pulwama ke upar you know that yeah. is really I, where is the need for where is the need for you to talk on these things just Isn't because you part- have a beef now you just say whatever you want to no i mean he was out of favor so he just started yapping ah. something anyway we uh, don't go into politics of the debate. fact but the incident really created a problem you know absolutely, absolutely. and we we'll don't go by the political debate but we need to flag this point we need to yeah, flag this yeah. point that that keep national security above politics mm. for india situation remains as sensitive as ever and we need to be prepared from not getting surprised and if surprised prepared to respond effectively effectively focus on information cyber and gray zone operations tit for tat every day you are being attacked financially you are being attacked on your infrastructure your economic systems are being uh, targeted by cyber attacks you got to have both defensive as well as offensive measures with with in your uh, and i'm glad that uh, a decision has been taken to uh, to raise cyber uh, cyber uh, command in every uh, uh, every command of uh, the agencies in every command huh? yeah so which is a very, which is a very good uh, step forward and uh, good thinking from my side it should have come about i have tweeted that it should have come a long time back but nevertheless it has come so uh, it's a, it's a positive development i think with that i have finished uh, with my uh, presentation as such and uh, i would say that we have to remain on guard even more now you see when the enemy is unstable when the enemy is uh, 
in a dire situation push to the wall he can bounce back like the cat which gets cornered right so uh, so we need to be careful of that we need to work internationally through our soft power through our through our non military means to ensure that uh, nuclear assets which are there with pakistan are either uh, defanged or they are kept under control managed well thank you fantastic sir i must say this was an eye opening presentation there are loads of things you know we we keep talking about these elusive nuclear weapons and the it's known that they need to be you know removed how is a big question as you brought out very clearly i have loads of questions myself sir but you know there are loads of audience questions as well we've got okay. close to 200 people watching us guys my Lovely. request to everybody please do like the video you know if you've not subscribed we are approaching 20000 please subscribe it's it's going to be i think in the next couple of days i hope that we cross that magic mark and yes if you can do support dev talks the dev talks efforts the qr code is right here or you can send us super stickers super chats or become a member which is what navin has done thank you so much navin for giving 10 people their membership to, tonight i greatly appreciate your contribution so let's get into some questions and see uh, what people have to say and i might have one out question by the way you know bang at the beginning i didn't want to kind of disturb this entire thing there was a guy called bage zatun okay, okay. Uh, pakistani <laughs> he started ultra yeah. obviously thoda touchy ho gaya tha so yeah. i tolerated him for a little bit then i said yaar bas ho gaya tu ja yahan se so i had to block him off but wo thoda zara he was getting a little yeah you know this thing to sun le yaar i know there are loads of i have about 2% of audience from pakistan they yes. listen to the shows i don't have hate mail coming i mean i do have hate mail coming not that much as the 2% mm-hmm. size is because that's a large number uh lot of the guys are pretty respectful i get some very nice twitter dms from a lot of people as well so uh, and some people actually genuinely ask questions i must say that but yeah yes, you do have you. this and uh, you know what you will have all, you will have all kinds of uh, oh yes yeah, sir uh, in the evening i had yeah. an interesting comment uh, on one of my shows he said we wish that the chinese come and teach you indians a lesson L- love ukraine yeah, fine love fine, ukraine fine. love from yeah. ukraine mai bola acha chal theek hai yaar koi baat nahi thank you so much so ab hai sir hamare bande unhone wahan par likh diya they said bossy wait and watch you got to get steam rolled <laughs> so you know yeah. this is this this keeps happening that's fine it's it's all right part of the game so let's take the first one sir ishan thanks so much for your contribution he said jai hind sir as pakistani rulers treated their civilians as nothing more than the means to an end and now the civilians are understanding the fact you see a possibility of a color revolution in their future interesting color that has come out here orange as well so <laughs> <laughs> you see uh, you see uh, the color revolution which came in the uh, arab world as uh, the russians feel that it was instigated by the uh, the americans and that links up to uh, the second Victoria bullet of, yeah that ha huh, yeah so that links up to our second bullet of the, uh, the in fact there is a book by jean sharp on uh, on, on this particular uh, aspect so uh, and, uh, and it's a very good book very thin not very uh, big uh, one can go through it with methods a, yeah one can go through it within a day or so so uh, that was supposedly instigated by the the us uh, a situation in pakistan is emerging of a similar nature why the chinese seem to be betting on the uh, the dictators uh, or the military somewhere i feel that the americans now are trying to change the tag and trying to uh, prop up the the civilian uh, Uh, civilian polity of uh, pakistan that's interesting and, i think and i i think i think we need to we need to uh, wait and watch and see how the two big players are going to fight in this battleground state of pakistan how are the chinese going to go through uh, their interests in pakistan and how are the americans going to go through their uh, interest in 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 pakistan Uh, one of the methods is 
to make the public strong they also feel that people of pakistan while they are radicalized but still there is a large section of pakistani people who have now got more educated their education level has increased their literacy levels have increased possibly it's time that civilian governments may hold their uh, i mean they may hold their power for a much more longer and a better time frame especially if the imf is able to instill some kind of an economic uh, discipline into that into the government if that happens if that happens i think uh, if not color revolution definitely a maneuvering to make the civilian hierarchy stronger and more powerful could be a way to balance things in pakistan so i have been i have been wondering why hasn't the army stepped in till now why would they sir I no, I've and, done a, I've done a show on this, and I asked why would they? No, I I agree with you. Why would they? But you see, uh, if you read the role of Pakistani army, role it's written for us. It is external defence. In their case, the primary role is ensure national unity. You see the difference. Yeah, yeah. I, I as an Indian Army uh, officer, I am told my primary role is to defend the country against any external threat. Secondary role is when called for, help in internal security. When called for. <coughs> Whereas in the case of Pakistan, besides these two, the first role is ensure national unity. so they, if they are not able to deal with their first role tell me how are they strong enough why did they include this they should yeah, this this absolutely there there are loads of reasons why he won't want to come in right now new army chiefs are instable right now and I this and that agree. there are loads of things i agree he went to that. china ki bhai main ye kar lo china said uh uh hang on don't do all this right now so the fact is it is there in their uh, blood na the fact that he went to china he that means he is urging he is itching to do it so maybe there is some game being played here let's see china told him no no not now so let Go. let's see what game is being played you know is the civilian hierarchy being now told to uh, become more stronger being given more powers how can they be given more power very simple stop the uh, defense aids to pakistan hold back their hold back their uh, uh, purchases hold back their their uh, their uh, spares, upgrades of mm. spares etc they'll come around they'll all come around and there are methods and means to do it yeah yeah absolutely and both china and america are capable of doing that absolutely yeah navin thanks so much for your contribution uh, jenza you said nukes are more about projecting power Uh, and not for actual use in that context can you comment on pompeo's remark in his book about india pakistan coming close to a nuclear war in 2019 how credible was that uh look uh, there are there have been number of books in which people have talked about a possible nuclear uh, uh nuclear conflict between india and pakistan these things are uh, in my view in my view projected due to some biases okay and to showcase personal yeah personal and some biases about the south asian uh, countries yeah especially from the point of view of pakistan where it is assumed or presumed that the nuclear uh, weapons are not in the hands of the civilian uh, leadership they are in the hands of the uh, army which is uh, which is supposedly uh, you know the armed forces are supposed to be uh, supposed to be not as uh, i should say uh, rationalist or deep thinkers and may may use this weapon and therefore trigger trigger some kind of a some kind of a nuclear conflict so so there are these biases which lead authors to talk about a possible india pakistan scenario 
every country does these exercises also and uh, we keep talking about pakistan internal uh, situation to say that you know the 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 first thing which is under threat is the security of their nuclear arsenals okay mm -hmm. so so maybe that particular factor leads to people assuming that there could be a india pak nuclear conflict see you cannot rule out anything in this uh, in this world especially if we have, if you have the uh, wherewithal to do it but the problem is everybody knows the outcome of this that's the that is the uh, stopping factor which i feel that it is a weapon of deterrence than a weapon of actual use i mean even in kargil the rumor has it that they tried to switch it on that's when bill clinton told told this up okay enough come here now so so i mean the, even even loads uh, of stories about that yeah Yeah, even U.S. Uh, I mean, told Nawaz Sharif to stop uh, any kind of misadventure. So, see that is uh, that is by the superpowers and the other uh, other countries uh, which are which are interested in maintaining peace and security. But even within India, India, uh, India and Pakistan and other uh, uh, other nuclear neighbors, etc., there is the sense of. Uh, uh, thinking with your head on the shoulders okay that these are weapon systems which ensure that you do not lead to a major war between two countries okay it's not only that uh, you are using it as a deterrence for uh, non conventional deterrence it is also a conventional deterrence you keep lowering your window of conflict why do you think the chinese don't go beyond galwan why do you think we had so much of restrictions during kargil these are rational thinkers they are thinking of possibilities which may occur if you go beyond a particular limit okay Certain yes, line, yes for public jingoism it is good you know you talk about it and say ki khatam kar denge aur usko nasht kar denge but the long term uh, so the, uh, the the greater implications have to be thought through by the leaders and i think uh, pakistani uh, army from a professional point of view i rate them as fairly good fairly good on these matters so, so they would take everything into consideration before uh, uh, using any such stupid action to whatever said on they've not been a, i would say a nuclear incident or an accident but a incident around nuclear weapons in pakistan now it's been quite a long time touch wood at least there's not been anything of that sort yeah they've sold the technology they've done this they've done that but that's everything has been secure there has not been this thing so till now i'm saying probably till now 11 o'clock at night 1st of may 2023 i don't know what's going to happen tomorrow but <laughs> so guys yeah. don't, don't don't get out to me if and tomorrow morning something happens it's not my i didn't call for it so <laughs> that is there that is there yeah let's move forward so ishan thanks so much yeah uh hypothetically let's say pakistan gets need denuclearize then what what do they have to offer as a nation to the world what academic industrial economic offering do they have to their uh, islamic nation neighbors or to the west and to the arab nations arab nations to uh, see uh, uh, see uh, see there are uh, uh, it's a very good question uh, this question is being asked in in kind of a Uh, fast forward mode that if this happens what is going to be the importance of pakistan for the world community when this buffer state was made in the 40s the idea was conceived by churchill pakistan was not nuclear so the importance of geography of pakistan remains It still remain so geography will be used by pakistan to keep it relevant because the whole world is not being denuclearized china is not denuclearized russia is not denuclearized us is not denuclearized there is a power game which keeps on going between a, a unipolar world to bipolar world to a multipolar world today we are talking of a multipolar world but more and more i keep looking into future i find that it is now tending towards becoming a tripolar world 
Hmm. And uh, maybe there would be a time that may come that uh, this tripolar world would ultimately result in a bipolar world. But that's a long, long way ahead. But tripolar definitely I see it emerging with India also now coming up in a big way. Of course, India has a long way to reach that kind of a, that kind of a status. But it is emerging. It is emerging. And I say this always from our informal economy point of view also. That our informal economy today is about 15.6 trillion, which is large, which is about, which is fairly large. 15.6, 15.6 or 8.6. I'm not, I'm forgetting the figures, but it is much more than your 3 trillion, 3.5 trillion. Economy, yeah, yeah. Which, the PBP and all that stuff, they, they talk about almost 10 trillion. Sir. Yeah. That's official. I'm talking of the informal. Ah. It is PPP is 3.6 trillion converted to PPP. That yeah. comes to about eight. That comes to eight, what I think nine eight, trillion. Eight, yeah. eight or nine trillion. But informal economy goes much beyond that. Goes much beyond. Rahul asks an interesting question. He says Pakistan does not doesn't have if Pakistan doesn't have nuclear weapons, then can we see a reduction in cross border terrorism? No. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> because <laughs> presently nukes are stopping India from punishing Pakistan for spreading terrorism in India? Not really, uh, uh, Rahul. If you see the world around you, whether you take the African countries, which are you know almost on a daily basis having these kind of activities, Somalia still is existing. Kenya, you have uh, these terror attacks going on. Nigeria, you have these terror attacks going on. Terror attacks, by nature, are people war. They are not country wars. Country war. They are people wars. And I mean, they can be sponsored by a country, but... That's fine. Stoking by a country, used yeah. by a country, uh, leveraged by a country, all those are secondary issues. But the primary fact of people not being satisfied with their, uh, with their aims and uh, uh, ambitions and, and, and expectations will resort to some kind of offensive action if it goes to an extreme rejection by a, by an opposing side or by an opposing group of people. And therefore, people's war never stops and it has never stopped. From the time human beings came onto the earth, terrorism has existed in some form or the other. I have a very detailed session of this uh, in my normal uh, terrorism classes ever I go to universities. Well, that's a story for a different day. Someday we'll probably look at that as well, sir. Um, <laughs> you know, I just remembered something when you were talking about denuclearization, Nishan's last question. If I may just take a moment to quote something that Seymour Hersh had said. Uh, he mentioned uh, that USA knows where Pakistani weapons are and everything and this and that. Yeah. And and the Pakistanis very openly say, you can take all the weapons, but not the two that are hiding in the tall grass next to the runway. <laughs> so that's 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 a telling statement itself. And this is this is Seymour Hirsch who's written, uh, I forget the name of the book. It's a beautiful, uh, uh, not book, it's a beautiful article that he had written. He's, uh, he's quite a well-known... Uh, uh, investigative author. journalist, yes, sir. Quite a well-known guy, you know. Yeah. Denuclearization, uh, see, if it takes place properly, fine, but the knowledge is there with them. No? Mm -hmm. How can you stop that from happening? Ukrainians were only, keep Ukrainians were only keepers. The technology was with the Russians. So the technology remains with Pakistanis. So we are at about one hour, 14 minutes. Request for 10 okay. more minutes and we'll zip through the rest of the questions. Yeah, okay. Uh, can we really denuclearize Pakistan without removing control of the Pakistani army on the economy, i.e. the Fauji Foundation? Ask Tushar. <laughs> okay, Tushar. Fauji Foundation is about 26 billion. Known. known. 
इट इज रिचर्ड एन अंबानी और अडानी इट्स इट्स द स्ट्रैंगल होल्ड ऑन द पाकिस्तानी इकोनॉमी विदाउट पेइंग एनी टैक्सेस बिकॉज इट टेक इट रन्स इट्स बिजनेस इन द फॉर्म ऑफ चैरिटी नो इनपुट टू द पाकिस्तानी इकोनॉमी वेन पाकिस्तानी आर्मी वेन पाकिस्तान इज बींग डी न्यूक्लराइज आई अज्यूम दैट पाकिस्तानी आर्मी वुड बी एट इट्स वीकेस्ट एट इट्स नादिर and at that point in time in my visualization the civilian government would be at its strongest something like bhutto you know when bhutto was ruling in the initial phases of his career he was dictating terms and in such a scenario how the foundations can also be made to pay taxes they could also be made to pay uh, revenue the back imf it said yes sir yeah uh, revenue back to the uh, exchequer of pakistan so uh, so so maybe uh, it is feasible because i am assuming uh, it will not denuclearize till the pakistan army is in control of uh, things pakistan army has to be first brought under control for any denuclearization the theory which i was saying that maybe this time round they are working on the civilian polity Naveen asks a question again. Thanks so much for your contribution. You said nukes are more about. Oh, sorry, not this one. I missed this. Yeah, yeah, this one. Sorry. Uh, in recent, in a recent talk, General Ryan looked at the Pakistan struggle between TTP, uh, TTP, the ta- Taliban PTI versus moderate Islamic deep state. Can you comment on the nuclear risks in either faction prevailing? Sir's argument, and I kind of agree with that, is that the Taliban-y PTI is because of Bushra Bibi, and you and I also kind of have had a discussion wherein Imran Khan has a deep contact with the with the, this thing. Sir goes on to say that it's Bushra Bibi who's 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 brought in that contact and is maintaining that contact with uh, 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 Hafiz Faiz Ahmed. Uh, on one part is this and on the second part you've got this so called moderate deep, deep islamic state which is the army and the whole yeah, establishment basically, yeah. basically that so so uh, so you're saying that uh, in a recent can you comment on nuke risks in in either faction of course the nuclear risks in the first option is much higher than in the second uh, second mm-hmm. option Uh, and uh, because second option is already there it's already there on the ground and uh, i won't even say that it's a moderate islamic deep state uh, as far as as far as uh, the weapons remain under the control of the pak army it's a moderate uh, professional army which is taking control of these nuclear weapons right sir it said musharraf musharraf is islamism you know the the musharraf okay, uh, oh, okay uh, after ziaul haq after Haan. ziaul haq the pakistani army's radicalization i'm not talking of the general polity yeah. pakistan yeah. army feels that radicalization is important okay for the unity of the country but they themselves would like to remain less or i would say not really radicalized it was ziaul haq who started making the pakistan army army radical but with his death this this process of radicalization of the army has taken a back seat okay i think sir has got hung up let me just let's just wait for that this is a interesting case and scenario which which is actually playing out now you got to yeah so they are still ra- they are still they are still radicalized but lesser and lesser in numbers that is why i keep saying that the pakistan army if anything is pakistan army remains strong their nuclear weapons will remain safe it's it's only the uh, it's only when it goes into that musha bibi kind of a formation then things can go wrong and if pakistani army does something it will be a very calculated thing exporting to somebody or it will be like a proper uh, operation it will not be a 
it will not be a it will not be a chaotic operation there were rumors that saudi was interested at one time so i don't know what's mm-hmm. happened to that uh they just asked uh recently pakistan organizes an event to call for bailout help from different countries china yeah. gave one of the lowest sums i think how do you think pakistan china claim to be all weather friends you see uh, you know what is the bilateral uh, bilateral loan of uh, china with pakistan 30, 30 billion 30 billion and out of this how much roll over they have already given 26 billion china ki jaan loge kya wo dete dete thak gaya hai china pakistan ko bhi nahi kar sakta sir marega nahi to wo bhi dete dete thak gaya hai and mind you and he is giving in kind a lot of things somebody you stuck. name it he is really stuck he is he struck very badly the chinese are just you know i mean they are groping for a way to get out of this after taking their pound of flesh yeah that seems to be the chinese position but they cannot let pakistan go haywire because it is the buffer state which is used by china against india against afghanistan if required and for security of its own xinjiang province so there are so many things which pakistan does for china so it will be, like i said it will remain in that liquid oxygen uh, category you know the chinese will keep giving them something or the other from time to time keep them afloat not let them die interesting question will the pakistani army allow the pakistani navy to have nukes it will be mean sharing control of the nukes not really uh, uh, satyam it would not really be sharing of uh, nukes uh, as you know the nukes are uh, at various i mean the various components of nukes are kept at different locations they are finally merged at the time of delivery right and the controls are with different different kind of people okay so uh, no no one single man can actually other than the guy who has got the got the final button in his hand you know uh, rest everybody is responsible for a part of the system and that's true even in india that's true all over the world if they give it to uh, one force one entity it will become a yes, very dangerous dangerous very dangerous. it will become a very dangerous situation so uh, they would be responsible being has fully control but nobody else has no that is true for everyone you know in every country there is one guy who is in control but other than him there would be uh, i can just quote you a very small example uh, don't take it from wherever it is uh, i had gone visiting a a complex in some some place it was a peaceful nuclear uh, station it was not a, a, a power station it was not a you know kind of a weapon uh, system etc to approach that place where uranium is enriched for power also there are two people who go together yeah, yeah i know there are two people who go together unless both collude with each other and do something stupid to get the uranium out in some form or the very other different. you know it's 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 very there, there are full proof measures which are kept which are which are uh, put into place by every country not only india not only pakistan any country which is controlling nuclear uh, systems has to do all these things these precautions are important and necessary uh interesting question interesting name i must say cafe tomato it rhymes quite quite well so would the us want to complete denuclearize pakistan or would it want the pakistani nuclear weapons firmly under the us control to keep a check on india the the second option would always be a preferred option for any uh, any country which doesn't want others to rise up uh, beyond a particular point right so i would i would uh, say that they would give some amount of uh, power to pakistan but not to the extent where they are capable of doing any major damage so complete decolonize denuclearization in this region definitely uh, i think it will not take place the us will have total control over them that's a that's a much more option for a better option for them that's a much better option for them is pakistan or sudan in the making time will tell 
time will oh, tell man. these are scary time will thoughts time will tell but uh, but uh, like i said pakistan is a battleground state sudan is not sudan has no uh, big players interest there you know just pakistan, a comment rk saab says in par daya karna to murta hai isliye to main bol raha hu ki daya mat kariye इनको अगर आपने मेरे पॉइंट्स देखे हो उनको अपॉर्चुनिटी की तरह लीजिए आप अगर आपको इकोनॉमिक स्ट्रैंगल होल्ड बढ़ाना है तो उनकी उनकी इकोनॉमिक मुसीबतें और बढ़ानी होंगी और बढ़ाने का तरीका ये नहीं होना चाहिए कि आप सीधे उनके पीछे पड़ जाएं नहीं कंडीशंस ऐसी डलवाएं कि जिससे उनकी इकोनॉमी ठीक भी हो लेकिन ठीक होने के पहले उनको इतना दर्द हो कि जिंदगी भर याद रखें और फिर बोले आ जाए आ जाइए भाई हमसे नेगोशिएट करिए हम आपकी सारी शर्तें मानने को तैयार हैं दैट शुड बिकम आर अप्रोच दैट वेन यू वेन यू हैव टू टेक एनी एक्शन टेक द एक्शन इन अ मैनर दैट दे गिव थिंग्स एट योर कंडीशन और तुम्हारी शर्तों पे वो आपको काम करें बाइलेटरल मतलब बाइलेटरल क्वेश्चन सर uh michael myers asks do you believe that the cross border terrorism is not possible without local support and we need to de-radicalize the indian radicals first okay uh, i would say it's a it's a kind of a combined approach there are uh, there are radicalized elements on either side of the uh, the fence uh on the other side there are more on our side there are less depending from place to place uh, in some parts of kashmir you may find more in some parts of hinterland of our country you will find radicalized people there are there are, i don't want to name these places but there are places where and radicalization is for an ideology it does not mean only a b c religion or anything i can be radicalized for a particular ideology okay like for a le- I-, i could be radicalized for a left ideology communism I- for that matter yeah left i am a i am a left radical okay so radicalization is there in our country and we have to work work towards ensuring that the radical elements keep reducing we have to get people into the mainstream and uh, unless we do that's why i said social harmony i mean one of the things which i said for even for denuclearization or anything of that nature social harmony social fabric must be of the highest order we should not prove winston churchill right who had given a statement saying that india with so many fault lines will not exist for a long time we have proved him wrong till now and we should continue to prove him wrong navin asks uh, general sir for, thanks for walking through a blo- broad line thinking of pakistani in you so broad question do you think the west is sentimentalized with our reading in case of potential proliferation or uh, wouldn't china's interests align with us they didn't when they were doing the first time uh, not really uh, not really uh, uh, navin chinese to my mind i i read them as businessmen hmm and Danda. and absolutely and xi jinping as of today as of today he is not a revolutionary like mao he is a hardcore bureaucratic dictator absolutely he calculates, he calculates things and then wrongly, takes action. sometimes wrongly but <laughs> he he will go through he, he will go through a process of his own uh, uh assessments he's, he's he's a very cool uh, person doesn't take actions in a hurry for him solution is not revolution for mao solution was revolution for him solution is actions after total uh, after considering all the aspects of a issue in favor of the nation but aligned to his ambition okay in favor of the nation but aligned to his ambition china india are view viewing each other no more as competitors 
they are viewing each other now today as adversaries more so by the chinese less so by the indians but it is high time we also recognize the fact that china is our adversary and our adversary can only be defeated or can only be uh, dealt with by using all the tools which we have at our command which is called time diplomacy information military economics this i like i mean we we said this the other day i'm sure you will also have a laugh at this isko new liquid oxygen mein rakho liquid usko jeene nahi dega oxygen usko marne nahi dega to ye to maine is baar bhi bola hai ki china yahi karta rahega pakistan ke sath china exactly yahi karta rahega aur west mein west ne imf ko select kiya is kaam ko karne ke liye exactly jab jab wo dekhta hai ki ekdam bas डूब गया नाक भी पानी के नीचे चला गया खाली आंख दिख रहा है और बाल दिखने लग गया सडनली इट विल पॉप हिम अप एंड से ओके हियर टेक द वेंटिलेटर श्रीलंका वन थर्ड आर्मी गिराओ ये करो वो करो बस सी व्हाई व्हाई आईएमएफ इज नॉट रिलीजिंग द फंड्स आई टोल्ड यू दैट फिगर 23 टाइम्स 13 बीओपी क्राइसिस इट वांट्स द डिफेंस एक्सपेंडिचर टू कम डाउन until and unless that doesn't cut 21 to 24% of their budget goes into this a poor country with 60 billion dollars as their uh, total uh, outlay gives 24% of the budget for uh, defense over and above that fauji foundation and uh, other foundations which are there in pakistan uh, commercial organized projects eat up money without giving anything to the exchequer so so i don't i i i, I don't think uh, this is really going to uh, the, the, the people are going to so easily give them everything they are now becoming more wiser uh, chinese will also keep them like uh, liquid oxygen and the west through imf will keep them under a liquid oxygen tank maybe sir, to close hmm. this sorry you saying no no nothing maybe no nothing to close this comment aapne sabse pehle ghabrana nahi hai yeah there was a there's a joke on this you know aapka kya khayal hai aap sabse pehle ghabrana nahi <laughs> This is that you know. There's that serial in which he uh, keeps talking about it. I, I saw it somewhere on the TV. आपको सबसे पहले घबराना नहीं है. नहीं सर, but I must say this is uh, uh, you know when we open up a discussion about the Pakistani nukes, and I'll just take thirty seconds because this is something that I've been thinking about over this wonderful talk that you've given us. The idea is always about the fact that they are dangerous. They're this. They're that. That's understood. We know that. today what you brought out is a destructive force and the impact of that force that probably a lot of us don't comprehend i mean we are not from the none of us are from the 40s and the 50s who who would actually remember what happened there uh, but we have seen videos of these tests being conducted but we don't actually know furthermore as civilians we probably don't understand the actual impact of a of a nuclear weapon uh, uh, i request all of us to actually just have a look at that lebanese uh, not Le- uh, yeah lebanon that bomb that exploded in not that bomb that 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 warehouse that exploded in oh. on the lebanese port that, that is, was that not one that is not even a fraction <laughs> yeah one tenth it was said it was one tenth of Hirosh- hiroshima but minus one tenth radiation. of hiroshima but minus the radiations minus the radiation minus the even the explosive impact i mean it wasn't that that heavy uh, there was no yeah absolutely minus radiation minus emp minus uh, the heat wasn't that as much secondary fires all those things yeah. there are so many things this yeah. was a strong explosion but the heat wasn't as much so this was just about 1/10th the force 
if that's just one tenth of Hiroshima, you can imagine what we are talking about here. It, it, it's ridiculous the kind of power. And now the bombs are coming in huge, yeah, megatons. Yeah, 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 sir. So <clears throat> that's something which is, I think, come home to me in a very, very strong way. That we got to be careful when we say the. I'm going to say this. I, Trump says it. The N word. Uh, it's it's very important to to do that. And the second part is that I don't think it is lost on the Pakistani army itself. No, uh, not at all. Not at okay, all. so if anybody will tell you that the Pakistani army will be stupid enough of putting a nuke on their missile and naming it at India, thinking that hum ab to jang I don't think they're stu- that stupid enough. I don't think so. So these are two big takeaways apart from what you have mentioned, which is very insightful, sir. And I to thank you to, you know, join the dots for a lot of us who have been thinking about these nukes and what could just, be actually done with them. Yeah. It just uh, to finish with that ghabrana nahi. Sir. Why has India selected second uh, no first use? That's the answer to everything. To all our discussions. Uh, may I, sir, why do we always call it no first use? Where there is a second byline which says massive retaliation. That's the that's the threat. But that shouldn't that be said together that no first use combined with a massive it's, retaliation? It's it's it's, it's called a iron fist in a velvet glove. The glove is first seen by the velvet. The fist is inside. The massive retaliation is the fist and glove is the uh, velvet glove is the face. I believe the Chinese say equivalent retaliation. We don't say equivalent retaliation. We say massive that, retaliation. That is that is again that is again uh, uh, I would say you know couching equivalent retaliation. Uh what is equivalent retaliation in ca- what is the retaliation in our case he he dumps 100 we are dumping 100 is it massive it is equivalent okay but 100 for pakistan is massive that's what i'm trying to tell you he will throw 100 at you in a country so large in expanse you for him 100 is also i mean it's a big thing sir you throw 100 on Pakistan, what will be left of Pakistan? It will be a so, big hole. <laughs> so when you say equivalent, equivalent also, but the impact on the target end is massive. It will be a massive. private lake between India and Taliban after that. Yeah. With China, <laughs> we are always uh, cautious. We are only saying deterrence. We are only saying credible deterrence. Or this, We started yeah. off with discursive deterrence. I think yeah. we should close the uh, discussion now. And uh... Yes, sir. Thank you so much, sir. Fantastic. Uh, this thing, guys, thank you so much for joining in. It's been a you know wonderful discussion. And till next time, when I'm able to uh, get Jan Dushant on another threadbare discussion. Till then, sir. Jai Hind thank and you. Jai Hind, all of you. Thank you.